Hello everybody and welcome to the presentation of the project Impresso Media Monitoring of the Past for the online DH2020 conference. I am Maud Hermann and I work as a researcher at the EPFL DH Lab in Switzerland and I'm responsible of the coordination of the project. Today, together with my colleague Estelle Bunou from the C2GH Center of Luxembourg University, we will introduce this interdisciplinary project on historical newspaper mining. We will start with a brief overview of the project setting, then present the challenges we have been facing, introduce the text mining module we developed and apply on the Impresso collection, and finally give you an interface guided tool. Only two persons are talking here, but it goes without saying that the whole Impresso team and partners are behind this work. So, it is since long that we do not see any more newspaper sellers like this, but we are all very familiar with newspapers. Published on a regular basis in centuries, Newspapers record wars and minor events, report on international, national and local matters, and document the day-to-day -day life. They also reflect the environment in which they were produced, with their political, cultural and economic aspects. In a world, we can say that they keep track of the great and the small history, and that they hold a very diverse, dense and continuous information. Historians are well aware of the value of these sources, and they are using them since long to work on various historical questions. This interest of historians is all the more important since the traditional barrier to the use of historical newspapers, that is to say difficult access and tedious exploration, have started to fall. If 10 years ago one needed to turn a lot of pages and to read countless of articles to find what she or he was looking for, nowadays many libraries are offering online portals where it is possible to visualize facsimile and to search the text extracted by means of OCR search often completed with metadata facets. This represents a huge step ahead in terms of preservation and access to documents. However, keyword search is not always satisfying and there are issues such as too many hits, irrelevant hits, false negative caused by bad OCR, and the general limitation of known item search. What is more, if data is now accessible online, it is somehow still too big to be explored and researchers get lost in this wealth of text. So if we ask ourselves what could we do better and we ask this question to historians, here comes their answer. First, they would like to be able that we help them to expand their query based on common OCR mistakes and spelling variants. So for example, if one would look for the word regierung, government in English, it could be good that the system will automatically suggest similar words by their orthography or by their meaning. In this case, we could have the support of lexical processing. Another request is please help me to find the frequency of a word in articles or certain type of thematic, or to distinguish the real occurrence from false positive emerging from advertisements, stock market, or mating pages. And for this, we will need to segment the image of newspaper and to classify them. We could rely for this on segmentation algorithm from computer vision and classification from natural language processing. Another request, very classical, relates to entity, with, for example, the capacity to find an article mentioning Jamun, and I want the right one. I do not want the homonym of this person. And once I found uh, this person, I want to know with whom this person was frequently associated in the corpus. And perhaps more specifically to newspapers, I would, be able, I would like to be able to find articles which mention this person as an author versus as the main subject of the article. In this case, name identity processing could help us realizing these things. There are many other requests, such as this, being able to discover similar items that people might be interested in, uh, being able to appreciate the high-level thematics of the entire corpus or subpart, and the capacity to build and interact with collections. So we can conclude that there is a need for much more than keyword search and that we should try to ask ourselves how to enable semantic indexing and exploration of large collections of historic newspapers. This is the objective of Impresso a three-year project funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation. This project gathers three main partners, namely the EPFL DH Lab in Lausanne, the Institute of Computational Linguistics of the University of Zurich, and the C2DH Center from Luxembourg University. We also receive the support of associated partners, which provide us with data, such as the Swiss National Library, the National Library of Luxembourg, the newspaper Le Temps and the ZNZ, the Media Archive of Valais, the Swiss Economic Archive of Basel, and much more. We also receive the support of the History Department of Lausanne University and of the Arfoclio Association, who help us with historical research and co-design. To achieve this objective of newspaper data mining, here is the team. The Impreso team is composed of people with various backgrounds, with people coming from NLP 
or digital humanities, people who are specialists of design and web development, and naturally, historians. We also team up with historical advisors and several associated historians. So this was the team, and here is our plan. First, we collect sources from archives from different countries, here mostly Sweden and Luxembourg, in French, German, and Luxembourgish. Once we have the sources, we prepare them for processing and design, adapt, and apply a series of NLP techniques in order to extract information contacting these sources. Here, what is at stake is to adapt NLP tools on historical and noisy data. Once we have extracted the information, the objective is to make it accessible, that is to say, to develop an interface allowing to explore and visualize the sources and their semantic enrichment. And finally, once the data is semantically indexed it is, and that it is possible to explore it, comes a step of historical research. The target user group of our interface is mainly historians, and the overall objective from the historical perspective is really to improve content discovery beyond keyword search and to enable a source criticism based on NLP enrichment and interactive data visualization. All in all, with Impreso, we demonstrate that historical needs can not only be met, but also further developed by combining NLP processing with interface design in a co-design setup. And here, the interplay between the three disciplines, NLP, design, history, is really essential. To achieve this objective, we have been facing several challenges that we would like to briefly outline here. The first one relates to digitized newspaper silos with two main issues, coverage and accessibility. Regarding coverage, a European newspaper survey showed that libraries had digitized only 10% of their newspaper holdings. So the digital landscape of newspapers is very partial and fragmented, and we need to keep this in mind. Then, even if newspapers are digitized, it doesn't mean that they are accessible. Here is a profile of digitized newspapers in Europe, and here is the one of those who are available in open access. So we are just facing a quite complex and opaque landscape of media silos, and it's not easy to work uh, to, to obtain the sources to work with. Our answer to this challenge was to devise and to implement institutional and technical frameworks which allow to access sources for research purposes while respecting different copyright policies. The second challenge relates to a quite boring and often overlooked aspect, that is to say data purposes. So what is the data that arrives to us? Well, we have different things. We first have the output of the OCR, which come into different formats. Then we have the image scans, which also come into different formats. And finally, some metadata, again in different formats. So the first thing that we have to do is to transform this digital archive into processable data in order to be able to process it at scale. So what we do is actually that we normalize, meaning we try to bring things to a common representation, and we need to keep in mind that each time we normalize, we are at least at risk of losing data. During this process, we have had many surprises and discovered that digital sources can be, to put it frankly, quite messy. Regarding OCR data, we encountered the problem of empty folders, corrupted archives, and many, many inconsistencies. These problems certainly have their origin in previous steps, but here there is nothing we can do but try to collect the data. Similar problems occur with images, where box coordinates are rarely entirely correct, as well as metadata, which can be incomplete and non-standard. Overall, before processing the text, there are a lot of hidden steps which lay the ground for all the rest, and caring about quality in this big data context is not easy. Our answer to this challenge was to devise what we call canonical data format, and importers appropriate not only for data preservation and archiving, but for large-scale processing, and we also try to trace as much as we can this data processing meta knowledge. Once the data is ready, we are happy to start processing, processing it, but then comes the third challenge of noisy and historical text. Here we can see the frequency of the term gazelle in Swiss newspapers, and we can notice an increase of the mention of this animal in the middle of the 19th century. Obviously, Switzerland did not have a lot of gazette, of gazelle, but rather a lot of gazette, such as the one of Lausanne. Our answer to the challenge of bad OCR was diverse. First, we tried to improve the OCR quality, by computing new models, especially for black letters of the end of the journal, which demonstrated the possibility to improve the quality by a large margin. Actually, this result motivated the archive holder to redigitize the collection in order to have scans of better quality. Since our primary objective was not to entirely redo the OCR of our collection, a second strategy to deal with bad OCR was to assess its quality in order to allow users to estimate the completeness of the keyword search results. 
The measure is computed by considering content words only and is meant to be easily grasped by non-technicians. The fourth challenge relates to the question of how to best accommodate text analysis research tools and their usage by humanities scholars. In other words, how to develop a search web application which is meaningful for historians. Our answer to this challenge was co-design and fast, prototype, fast prototyping. The principle here was to have a continuous exchange to learn from each other, to experiment and to continuously evaluate. This was implemented via regular workshop, interaction with associate researcher, in personal community call, and one-to-one -one collaboration. Finally, as a last challenge, new ways to engage with contents also mean new ways of using it. And the main question here is how historian could work with algorithmically, algorithmically generated changing and certainly imperfect data. Our answer to this challenge corresponds to two guiding principles that we apply when developing the impress research and exploration web application, that is to say, transparency and generosity. Despite all these challenges, we devised, adapted and applied a range of text and image processing tools on our collection. First, we applied some lexical processing in order to identify the language, normalize historical spelling, have some limitization necessary for further processing and compute word analytics. We also compute the quality of OCR at article level then going from lexical to conceptual level, we apply topic modeling in order to automatically extract the topics of each item of the collection. We also apply an entity processing, that is to say the recognition classification of person, location and organization, and also the linking to a knowledge base, in our case, Wikidata. We compute text reuse in order to identify similar passages, as well as image similarity in order to enable visual search. We also implemented the first prototype of a recommender system as well as key phrase extraction. These techniques are very briefly mentioned here. For more detail, please visit the Impresso Project YouTube channel and the forum that playlist which contains small videos about each technique. All these techniques are not perfect and we are constantly working on improving them via, for example, the organization of shared tasks. The infrastructure and all of these semantic enrichment developed by the Swiss part of the team in Lausanne and Zurich are then accessible through a single, through a single point via a front-end interface designed and developed by the Luxembourgish part of the team and now presented by my colleague Estelle Buna. Thank you, Maud, and welcome to this second part of the presentation where we will present some of the highlights of the Impresso application. My name is Estelle Bunaut and I worked at the Luxembourg Center for Contemporary and Digital History. The application is really the result of our interdisciplinary collaboration. We built a tool for humanists to enable an academic use of digitized newspapers. We did so by trying to answer two simple questions. What am I looking at and what can I do with it? The first questions correspond to the issue of digital source criticism, what we tried to meet with the uh, principle of transparency. Bringing together all the different disciplines enables to produce knowledge that help assess critically uh, the digitized newspapers in an academic context. The second question, what can I do with it? we try to address it with the principle of generosity, to be able to use and produce new workflows uh, in this environment. Because of time constraints, we will not be able to give you a detailed guided tour of the application. But instead, we will highlight some of the features that serve the workflows we try to develop uh, for the, uh, when creating the uh, application. We try to develop workflows where you can seamlessly switch scale from a distant to a close reading, uh, where you can associate a targeted uh, query uh, with a constant possibility of exploring what is around and uh, take a look at the general uh, corpus and switch back to the present uh, query that you're uh, conducting. So I will present you uh, well how the keyword searches is, is uh, possible in the uh, Impresso application, but then also I will 
show you uh, one feature that we developed where you, we can have a high level comparison uh, between queries or collections that you can create in this application. And then we will have a quick dive uh, into uh, some more um, experimental features that are the text reuse and the recommendations. To illustrate the different features, I will present to you a simple use case where I will try to find articles that deal with the shipwreck of the Titanic uh, and will try to differentiate uh, those from, the, uh, from articles uh, dealing with the movie Titanic. With a simple keyword search. When I type the word Titanic, I immediately, with the autofill, get some information about the automatically retrieved content uh, of the Impresso corpus. But I will start with a simple uh, article content search. Here, the human readable summary will inform me of the parameters that I have activated uh, for my query and each element will be added uh, automatically. And here another thing we wanted to highlight is the frequency line that is available both in absolute and in relative uh, number. From the simple keyword search, we offer the possibility to explore uh, the semantic uh, surrounding of the uh, keyword we are looking for. Uh, if we open uh, the search peel, we can add uh, any new uh, keyword we are interested in, but we can also look for similar uh, keywords. And for that, we will rely on the word embeddings. And here in the example for uh, Titanic, the uh, word embedding uh, for the German language offers words such as uh, Schiffskatastrophe or Carpathia, etc. That we can then select and add to a query. Taking a closer look at the results, we can either uh, read uh, the results individually, but you can also uh, use the metadata and the NLP output to get a broader understanding uh, or a distant understanding of the content of the uh, result list. We can do so by looking at the classical metadata that have been collected uh, for the Impresso corpus, but we can also, as I mentioned, look at the uh, NLP output. And here I want to uh, highlight the uh, named entities or the persons and the locations. And here we can quickly uh, notice uh, Kate Winslet and James Cameron. If I don't know who that person is, I can quickly uh, um, click on the arrow to get some information uh, about who that is or where that is. But also, I can uh, easily navigate between the current search. Here we have the distribution of uh, articles over time that contain Titanic Carpathia and uh, the person Kate Winslet. I can also switch very easily uh, to the general Impresso corpus and see where Kate Winslet is present independently of Titanic or Carpathia keywords. Have a distant uh, reading and a navigation uh, of this uh, query result is by using the output of the topic modeling. We have here the topics, we can see here the first topic is movie, cinema, etc. But the second is here already boat, and I have here the information that there are 2000 results compared to the 8000 here. So I can again uh, take a closer look at the topic and then use it as a search filter to narrow down my uh, uh, current list of articles. I can also use the topics as a way to exclude uh, a whole list of articles that may not be relevant uh, to my uh, query or my research question. The inspect and compare page helps us have a high level view of a given query or a collection. If I take again here the Titanic uh, Carpathia uh, query, with the topic boat, sea, etc., and wanted to see how much it overlaps with uh, Titanic uh, and the movie topics to see uh, how much of the, uh, for instance, uh, articles on the shipwreck uh, arose at the time uh, surrounding the movie of 1989, but also uh, other movies uh, previously. I could try and, and make uh, a comparison between two, these two queries and see here 
uh, in the central column uh, what what is the overlap between query A and query B. So we see here that the highest overlap is uh, uh, around the time the movie came out, but uh, maybe some other uh, peaks may be indicative of other uh, occasions where uh, those two topics overlapped. We see here again the detailed view as we had previously on the left side of the search page and we can see in detail what are the topics, what are the persons, how they overlap, which don't, and we can uh, the locations, etc. And we can again curate and decide uh, to take one topic out or in uh, one of the queries. And here the inspect view is the logic to have a detailed view where one can really read uh, uh, the information of each uh, query. Whereas the compare view that we can here uh, go to by switching the tab helps us more have a visual uh, impression of how the two queries might might overlap but also contrast uh, uh, their each uh, uh, proportion. We have here uh, the overlap and uh, the respective size uh, of each query per newspapers and, and language etc. So for all metadata and here again the topics uh, and the uh, named entity uh, as previously mentioned. Finally, the text reuse is a more experimental feature that we have introduced in the uh, Impresso application. This helps us find uh, clusters of articles that share common text passages. We can search also for keywords in this cluster and then retrieve uh, clusters that contain these keywords. So here we have a thousand uh, clusters that contain the word uh, Titanic. And in each cluster we will have several articles that will share some text passages. Like here for instance around the time of the catastrophe where the facts are presented and maybe it's an interesting starting point to look at the sources that the newspapers may have used to cover a given uh, uh, event. The clusters can also uh, ident help us identify uh, which newspapers just simply share uh, their content. We have here the L'Imparcelle et l'Express, uh, two newspapers that uh, uh, merge uh, progressively and here we have a completely uh, overlap of the two of the content of the two articles. This was, in a nutshell, the Impresso project. Now is the time to thank you for your attention and to invite you to check out our application as well as the other uh, outputs of the project. All the links will be in the description of the video. So thank you and hope to talk to you soon uh, on the Humanities Common Forum.